Hey guys, this is Joe with That Hashtag Show. I am with... DJ. And we are here to bring you the Ranger Wrap-Up. I think that's the name we kind of decided on. We are, we are confident in the Ranger Wrap-Up. The Ranger Wrap-Up is The official is Dino Supercharged After Show show. And we are going to be bringing you the latest episode of review on... Or the latest episode review on episode number 10, which is called Gone Fishing. Who is a... It's a uh, Riley-centric-ish episode. Ish episode. We're not talking about the 97 Gone Fishing with Joe Pesci and... Uh, <laughs> I do like the fact that that was in your notes, though. Like, that's the thing that you thought of. It's the Gone first fishing. thing that came to mind. It was the first thing that came to mind, man. But episode 10, Gone Fishing. And here we go. Check out this clip. I got the pick. Is that... He found the Titanosaurus? It must have saved him! And it's underwater? Hang in there, Let's Matt. talk about the episode Gone Fishing. It was, it was, oh man. First of all, let me just say, it was one of the best episodes, I would say. Actually, it was probably the best episode of Supercharged so far. This is the episode that Dino Supercharged should have returned with, compared to last week's episode um, with, with Shelby. This is the episode that, man, there were so many cool moments in this episode. All right, and let's get to them all. DJ, walk us through them. All right, so episode opens up with uh, Shelby... Crap, Shelby, Chase, Riley, Riley's brother, and Coda yep. going fishing at a Riley's brother, Matt, by the way. Riley's, Riley's brother, Matt, who... Play, played by? Oh, man. Um, um, Mr. Walker. Um, oh, dude. Oh, you know, I <laughs> yes, he it's is, like, I actually do have notes. It's like played by Alex Walker. Alex Shout out Walker. to Alex Walker, because I love his relationship with, um, with uh, Riley, because I actually do believe that they are brothers, and the conflict, or at least the theme in this episode, has to do with being competitive, and different ways of being competitive. Riley believes in winning. That's the way he has fun. While Matt, his brother, Matt Griffin, he believes in just relax, have a good time. That's all that matters. Just don't ruin the moments. Don't, don't overthink it. Just, just relax. And That's I kind also, of like how you, Joe. Like, relax. Just, relax. Just relax. I also like the way that Riley's character is always about competitiveness. This is a character consistent. trait, a consistent character trait that Riley has. And I know he's trying to overcome it a little bit. The only episode I don't see that we had that competitive... We, actually, we did. Was that the track episode? Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even then, he was very stern and very serious. And he wanted to win. As, he was as far as his ethics. Yeah. Um, even with the the bullying episode, he wanted to outdo his childhood bully. Yeah. And contemplated using his energy gem just to get ahead. But anyways, back to the episode. So they're going fishing, and we get our immediate fan service by showing Coda. Rugging it, doing his Aquaman impression by barehanded, barehandedly catching fish one at a time and just looking amazing. And Shelby thinks it's great. Oh, it's a great little moment with uh, Chase as well, where Chase oh. coming up with some big ones, coming up with some big ones. He pulls his line and because he catches. Because he's wearing his lucky hat. He is wearing his lucky hat. And because of that lucky hat, he catches a boot or two. Or three. Because you know, you find those in the lake all the time. And all is, the time. And as a ranger, we're cleaning up lakes. That's what we do. We hey, we up. had an episode in the past about that in Mighty Morphin. We did. I don't remember what the title was. They, they cleaned up parks, and it's, I'm just saying, we, you know, a little parallel. Right. So uh, Shelby thinks it's really cool and decides to text Tyler the picture or send Tyler the pictures of Coda. Now, which what's is interesting kind of cool. about this is you brought this up earlier off screen was that, that? we haven't seen the, or at least, we haven't seen it in real time, the, uh, the, Shelby, Shiler. the, Shilers, the Shiler the Shiler stuff in a while. So, heart to that. Um, <laughs> we haven't seen that stuff in a while. Even though I did go back and I watched, uh, I, I just recently watched all of Super Dino Charge just to catch up. Just a refresher. With every, just a refresher. Just a refresher. Um, and it does, it, it actually it does happen pretty recently. If you watch them all, yeah. uh, 10 in a row, it, it does happen back when, right before, or like the episode I think Tyler finds his dad. Or right, the episode right before Tyler finds no, his no, dad. No, 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 absolutely. I mean, so, when, when they ship, the Shiler, they ship it well. Yeah. But at the same time, um, since Dino Supercharge, and you know, it's, it's a good reminder as far as. Are you a fan of the Shiler? I am a fan of the Shiler. Are you? I mean, yeah. it's red and pink. I mean, when's the last time that we saw a red and pink Time Force, right? Um. Maybe no. Time Force. No. Is it not? I would say. Gosh, you might be right because I was I thinking. I want to say it was Time Force. Yeah, because I was thinking, no, oh man. You might be right on that. Yeah, I mean, it, was, it definitely wasn't overdrive. It wasn't overdrive. It definitely was not. It SPD. couldn't have been RPM. It was not RPM because no pink. I want to. You say, might be right. Yeah. You might be right. Yeah. No. What about Mia? Did Mia? Mia was in Kevin. Oh yeah. Mia was into Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anyways. No, Emily was into Kevin, right? 
No, Emily was in, into Mike. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, Mia yeah, was yeah, into yeah. Kevin. That's so correct. anyways, I'm a fan of the Shiler. So we are immediately taken back to the command center where Tyler is with Sir Ivan. And Sir Ivan has a great line again talking about, what a great fish. Um, back in my days, our fish could swallow a ship. And like Tyler's like, we're not talking, not talking about, about whales. We're not talking about whales, which is like another I great. love Sir Ivan. Ivan. <laughs> Sir so Ivan is the best good. one-liners. And it, he, they comp he compliments really well with the rest of the cast. That's the best part, man. Yes. Uh, you know what's interesting That's is right, that man. with Sir Ivan, I, I did it like the Sir Ivan. The Sir Ivan. He, he's a great addition to this team because he is the legit man out of time, but he's also subtly comic relief. He really is. Um, the great thing, Coda is comic relief. Like, that's his character kind of. Sure, sure. He's this, but both, but Ivan plays it off in, in, a, in a very charming, like, I, remember, I just remember going back to the episode where uh, he cut up the, um, the suit. Yes. And yes. he was like, okay, fine. That's $2 million. Just pay him the money. Exactly. He has no concept of like this time at all, which is hilarious. I mean, it's kind of like the Captain America, like, hey, I understood that reference. Right, right. Like when he's on, he's on. But when he's not, he's like really not, but he's still on per se. Wait a minute. Is, is Ivan still a millionaire? Because did he give that check to the guy and the guy kept giving it back? And Oh, you know what? Oh, I got to go back. Because uh, they kept like exchanging the no, money, did, so I don't did. know who, who ends I, up with it. I don't. Okay, we're, we're gonna we'll we're, we're, we're gonna confirm when we can. Um, Prince Phillips enters with um, Tyler's dad, James Navarro, and anytime you, you know, I know you're the fan of the uh, the Phillips. We, we we love the Phillips. We love the swag, and he comes in. He's so my proper. actually he's my favorite ranger. Is he? Yeah. He's he's a cool he's a cool character, especially since he is still a prince of Xandar. The only thing I don't like about Prince Philip is that he's underutilized. I always feel that he's in this, especially supercharged. He's in it for such a short amount. Of, like, he's like, oh, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm here. He just shows up here and there. But his character development from, from Dino Charge was really strong. Sure, sure, sure. And I think that that's the reason I liked him. Because he had he was the only range that I felt like really had to earn his energy. But to Dino Superchargers, and actually Dino Charge's credit, period. I mean, in the Kill Deuger reference, in the Kill Deuger series, I mean, Graf, I mean, Gray, CN, and Violet were underutilized because essentially they were very part-time rangers. They were not really part of the core sure. team. They were spirit rangers, and you could check out Kyo Deuger as far as why. Well, let me ask you something. Violet, is she used more so in the American series than she is in the... Yes. Okay. Yes, in the sense that, I mean, Violet does hang around in a command center type of setting, but the way, like, for instance, like this episode... And it's we'll, we'll you, you, it. Yudi, I think is her name? Uh, or am I wrong? No, no. Um, um, Yudi's um, the gold... I can't remember. I'm trying to think of close. Ian. I'm trying to think of the way Ian used to say it because, um, like, uh, too many stompers today, man. Throwing me off I'm my game. I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. Stomping me today. That's not cool, man. Not in front of the people. So, anyways, um, Prince Phillips. Uh, wow. Okay. Prince Phillips enters with James, who is with Tyler and Sir Sir Ivan, and they're talking to Kendall. And I love his progress report as far as what he's <laughs> talking about. He gets off this is your phone. one liner, right? This is probably one of my favorite things in the whole episode, which is um, Prince Phillips gets off the phone talking about, okay, keep it a secret. Confirmed. We've searched the entire earth. <laughs> We've searched the entire earth. The silver energy gem is nowhere on the planet Earth. Where I'm like, right, because we need to know this for, for the sake of plot. We need to know that they searched the entire Earth. I also like <laughs> that he's the plot device that gives him the news. Like, like it's his people. But they They're searched the entire planet. I mean, hey, obviously, Xandar, Xandar has he, might be the, he might be that powerful. He may he have, he, he could hold it down, but I mean, which leads Kendall to say, well, if it's not on Earth, then where is it? And then next thing you know, something from space. It came from space. But this is where the episode gets really interesting. It really does. Because so. uh, because mm -hmm. I felt like this part of the plot took more of the A plot rather than, and Riley was more of the B plot, even though it was a Riley-centric episode. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so go ahead, continue. No, so we have something that's coming from space, and we find out that it's going straight to Amber Beach. Convenient. So, cue music. Dino Ranger, oh, Power Rangers, Dino, Dino Charge. Charge. So they come across. That's good. That's good. That's good. So they come across this uh, message pod, and a la Star Wars, the um, Princess Leia message in a bottle, we get a message from the Silver Ranger. The Silver Ranger. And he lets us know that 
even though he's bonded with the Energem, his Zord is inactive and dormant because they're too far apart. Now, the last time this plot device was used on Power Rangers yeah. was actually in Power Rangers in Space with my favorite Ranger, the Phantom Ranger. Turbo, actually Power Rangers Turbo, where they introduced the Phantom Ranger. No, it was in Power Rangers in Space. Was it not? So, in Power Rangers in Space... Oh, school meet. Well, yes. Andros... Andros, he gives Andros like the mega ship or whatever. Sure, sure, sure. And then they're fighting, and then he they see a little message, and Cassie picks it up, and it's a little hologram of the Phantom oh, Ranger, and he's like, that's Cassie, right. like I'll be, I'll be whatever he says, like that's and right. I miss you or something, and then he and he like disappears. Yeah, disappears. yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever finding that. That's the last time that plot device was used from my memory. It could be used in Time Force with Alex, but I kind of doubt it. Maybe, but I mean, it's Phantom Ranger. Right. There's always love for Phantom Ranger. Come on. He's the best. I, like, hope, I hope he comes back sometime. I'm the Phantom Ranger. He is definitely the, well, you're Tommy, but if there was a second runner-up, he might be Phantom Ranger. That's true. He might be Tommy morphed into the Phantom Ranger. We're going to put a six Ranger in his line, his arsenal. That should be a new, like, we should just have an episode on speculation on the Phantom Ranger. We eventually. should. I mean, um, I'm a fan of Billy. I'm a, I'm a fan of I could think it could have been Adam, personally, but there you go. continue. So anyways, uh, the message is cut off, and they're attacked by the henchman Singe, Fury, and a couple of other baddies. And they get into a fight. They throw down, and it's a cool, cool team-up between Red. You know, oh, that was a great team-up. Yeah, Red, Red um, purple, purple, Aqua. Graphite. Graphite. Gold. And gold. And it was an awesome secondary team compared to the core team. And it was a cool little sequence. It was it was a cool little fight, right? And I, that's the first time that I've seen all those Rangers morph together. Those exactly. particular Rangers. Exactly. And I'm a fan of the whole father and son team up anyway. It I, throws me off a little bit. I'm not going to lie. James, James being like Tyler's age does throw me off. But I like it just because it is so different. I mean, It's completely different. This is the most diverse cast. Well, not just cast, but di di most diverse characters oh, I agree. of any Ranger season. I, I, but I, here's, I, I mean, yeah, it throws me off, but I also think that, I mean, they do explain it, that when you have an energy, you don't age. Correct. So it makes sense to me. Hence Coda. Well, right. well Coda was frozen, but... But even Sir so, Ivan. like Sir Ivan, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, I think it's really cool. I mean, at the end of the day, you're able to say, like, this team does have a father and son. You're able to say there is a caveman. You're able to say there's a knight. You're able to say there's a modern-day prince on the team. So again, shout out to Dino Charge just for being so different. There was an interesting, yeah. and maybe I'll, I'll use it in the uh, promo here, but there there is an interesting thing, because I, I got to interview Davi Santos, who plays Sir Ivan. Yeah, man. And he, I asked him to give me a hashtag for uh, something that's gonna happen this season. Ah. And his hashtag was, hashtag relatives. Huh. So, huh. that's a teaser. I'll play it here at, at later on, but. Yeah, definitely. Um, so. Continue. For sure. Uh, we're brought back to uh, Shelby and the fishing crew, and we're back to the other plot device, which is Riley versus his brother, having fun versus competitive, gotta, gotta be in it to win it. And so this is really cool moment where Matt is pretty much fed up with all of Riley's competitiveness, and he just straights up, I gotta get away from my brother. Get away from you. Like, he if just If you have puts, a brother, you've been there. You man. Know. And he was he was hard about it. Like he, no, he was good. He was done. He wanted to get away from this type of competitiveness. He wanted to have fun. He felt like it was. He felt like Riley was sucking the life out of the party. And he kind of was. And if if you're really having a good time, anyone who really tries to make it into a thing tends to bring the mood down. You know, originally before this episode, even I don't know, I would have said that Riley had the least amount of character development, and I think that's completely wrong now. Like they're doing a, a lot. They're doing a really good job of developing these characters, actually. And they've been consistent. So, like you never just see them go from like really from one person to another. Well, I, I feel think. like I know Riley, just yeah. like I feel like I know Coda and Tyler and and Shelby and Chase. Maybe, maybe I would say um, Shelby less more, a little bit, or maybe well, we Chase got, less well, more. Well, we got to see Shelby's dad. We did. We got to see her best friend recently. We got to know that she's really into boy bands. I feel like there's been at least deep, some more than others. Obviously, some more than I others. mean, we haven't seen a lot of Miss Morgan, like, backstory yet. Correct. But then I guess we're getting that through the way that she kind of interacts with the Rangers being their overall, almost like mentor-ish leader. We've gotten little so we uh, tidbits as far as how she, I guess, joined. Like, for instance, like, Coda and Riley being the first That Rangers was really cool, actually. I love it. And that. bringing them all in. So she was, the, I mean, she was there to, con she was the Nick Fury. Sure. Of the group in a lot of ways, you know what I mean? And then I also like the fact, like like I said, Prince Philip had Prince a Phillip's great backstory. Prince Philip's had the most, he had the most He had a character. straight whole episode. Yeah, and oh, Prince Philip's so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as character development goes, Prince Philip's probably had the best character arcs. Which tied into Ivan's. Which in, ties in into way, so. Ivan's. I mean, 
Um, that is one thing I will say that I wish that um, in the writing they would acknowledge a little bit more since Sir Ivan is so, is so nobility mm -hmm. and that is essentially his, that is who he serves. I mean, even though he said you are free to do and you know operate on your own accord, that is still your your liege, your your king in a sense. Well, he's a prince, but that's still, I would love to see like Ivan like, you know, do like the whole kneel to him sometimes. I don't know, just because that would be something Ivan would or do. Or like in battle, like protect him. Like kind of yeah. like, a, yeah. That'd be and there's cool. a lot of original footage. So before you go all Sentai crazy, like, no, because in the Sentai they didn't do. First of all, there's a lot of stuff done in Dino Charge and Super Dino, Dino Super Charge, forgive me. Yep, and I didn't make the same mistakes. So well, the Super version. Um, where there's a lot of original footage and it goes seamless and wait so will it be Power Rangers Ninja Super Steel Ninja Power Rangers Super, Super Ninja, Ninja Steel, Steel Ninja Super Steel I hope they get Ninja rid of Steel the Super. Ninja Steel Just, Super yeah. anyways I didn't mean to cut you off that just no, hit, not my, at hit, all. My, hit I mean, my mind let's be honest it's one season it's still Dino Charge so come on right come I, on. I think though the point you're trying to say <laughs> that, and it's something else you mentioned because you do watch the Sentai yeah um is that this episode was a Riley centric episode, but it's not like that in the Sentai. Not at all. Same thing with the last episode. And it's beautiful because you would think because it's a green focused episode for our US version, that it would be a green focused episode in the Kyoto. And it really isn't. I mean, the focus of the episode is it, there's a lot of uh, music of the earth in Kyoto. I mean, there's certain elements that really can't be used for the US. Matter of fact, speaking of which, so bringing it back to uh, to the focus of this episode, we get our monster of the week with one of the best names. I, uh, talk about the names, man. Oh man, so far, <laughs> since we've started this, I think we're the good luck for Power Rangers. Woo! Since we started this, our first monster was called Half-Baked. Half <laughs> And he was he's like all about the munchies. Yes. This monster is hook beard. Hook beard. So we're on we're on a trend here with good monsters. And he names. fishes. And he has hooks for beards. We should just That's call him JD, because our producer <laughs> JD is hook beard. He does have an epic beard. He does have yes. an epic beard. So in any case, we have our monster of the week. He uh, oh, matter of fact, one of the first things that Hook Beard and the monsters do is because at this point, Matt. Riley's brother is fishing by himself to get away from it all. You know, we all need to. And, the, and everybody need... knows fishing does relax the, the nerves yeah. and it calms the spirit. You need to get away a little bit. That's what you do. Exactly. So he's minding his own business. And what did the monsters do? They decide to attack him. And you don't know what happens. All you know is his boat disappears and he's like underwater. But at this point, you're like, dang, they really attacked a human. Like, Which was, I think, a, a great move. Uh, for the writers to do, yeah, because it, it like it makes you it makes you it makes it, it stakes. It raises, stakes. The it raises the stakes. stakes. It makes it makes it way more to, to 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 relate to because you care about what happens to, and that's the other thing too. They've done such a good job with the supporting casts and just the recurring characters. Yeah, because we haven't seen Riley's brothers since, since episode one, since for a while. Oh, episode it? two actually. Yeah, well, basically for, like from a long time ago, and and it really 30... builds. 30 up, 30, 28 episodes ago. Give or take. Why not? Why not? The point episodes. is, they built this world around Dino Charge and Amber Beach and just like the characters that we, we relate to. I mean, the secondary characters have been awesome. We've had Chase's little sister. We've had Coda's yes, little brother. Yes. You know what I mean? You had, you had, uh, you had Shelby's dad. Shelby's dad. Who was also Sky's dad. I who, mean, not Sky. I was... Uh, also, that was Scott's dad. That Scott's, was Scott's dad, dad from RPM. Yeah. For those who don't know, the, uh, the actor that plays Shelby's dad did play... Um, Scott's That's dad funny. from RPM, so... Just well, funny. Well, you know... Alternate, alternate Earth confirmed. Oh, that's yeah, that's true. It was an alternate Earth. <laughs> alternate Earth confirms, huh? huh? And then um, the, the girl became the Pink Ranger. It's, so in any case, so he disappears, and then obviously Riley and the other Rangers are concerned, and then come to find out he was rescued by the Titanozord. Which is a real dinosaur. The Titanosaurus oh, God. is a real dinosaur, which DJ did not know. Did you know, sir? I said it was real. You did. It was enough to. That's what I mean about Joe. He will convince me that something's real and be right. Get out of here with that. Titanus, man. Titanosaurus. There is, is a, a real Titanosaurus. Thing. I figured like, oh, it's based on Titanus, you know, just like. That's what he. That's so. Yeah, we we got into a debate. I was like, oh, wouldn't, wouldn't so it be nice. cool if they would have just brought back Titanus? He's like, well, it's a nice throwback to the Titanus, like, because you know. I mean, it's not like there's a it's Titanosaurus. It's not like there's a Titanosaurus. <laughs> oh, actually, there is a Titanosaurus. Just like, well, you know what? Matter of fact. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. That's <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, for your favor. But in, in fairness, <laughs> Titanus was also the same color scheme. Yeah, yeah, correct. I mean, um, very muted colors, um, grays, whites, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so we find out that he's saved by 
Titano. Titano. But it's not over. He's not safe because the other thing is he's running out of air. Now, is this a throwback to the Sentai where the Purple Ranger goes into the Zord as well? Because I think she can. Doesn't she do that into the purple? Oh, she she willingly she jumps willingly in. jumps That's into right. the Plazio Zord. Plazio Zord, yeah. Um, but I mean, but this this was about suffocating. Now there was an episode. Another stakes moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, um, they actually did a couple of. Uh, there was another moment in, in Dino Charge, the series, where they might have. What the air the air element was was brought in where oh where they were they were trapped, trapped under the rocks exactly yeah. exactly so they're not afraid to to at least allude to the safety a, of the rangers a bigger you know, there are consequences like lives can be lost like death without saying death you know what I mean so that's that's really cool yeah um, and obviously Riley dude if you heard Riley's morph call and he leads the morph he leads he the morph lead right the morph. now if you hear Riley's morph call. Man, you'll pay for this. Well played, Michael Tabor. I think Dino he, Chargers. He, he really brought the emotion to this he to did. this episode. I think Michael Tabor did a great job at conveying that his brother, uh, the, his brother was in peril, yeah. and he needed to to save him. And you could tell that was all that was on his mind. Absolutely. Uh, Michael Tabor did a great job in this. All the Rangers did a great job. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But Tabor definitely stood out. But they emoted what they needed to emote. I mean, that is your brother. That is family. That. You tried to kill and would have been dead. And that's the thing. Like the funny thing is, well not funny, but the thing is, if it wasn't for the Titano Zord, he probably would have died. I mean, this Zord was on the bottom of the lake, mind you. But we find out that the Titano Zord saves him. Uh, we see Poissandra, she comes Ooh, back. Oh, this was great. Yeah, and they, they had this whole fight with Poissandra, Fury, uh Singe. Was Singe there? Singe was there. So Singe may might have been there. Well, anyways, Poissandra and the main villains, they have like this great fight off with the Rangers. And I was telling you this off screen that these villains are competent fighters. Which you wouldn't they're have not expected. Bumbling. Yeah, they're not yeah. bumbling idiots, kind of like Elgar was in uh Yeah, Elgar and even like Squat and Bad Boo. Yeah. They weren't really fighters and you know arguably Wrench does have like uh Squat's voice with the, oh no that whole little yeah, you do that really well actually. <laughs> That's one time only folks that's you, you can replay that, but no. So, <laughs> so he they they have this good fight off, and they're competent fighters. They're yeah. giving the Rangers a run for their money, and then, long and behold, who saves the day? Keeper, Keeper saves the day like like a boss. You would think that like I, I know there's a lot of jokes Woo! going around that he's like this just this an ET like looking thing. But dude, like a boss, like he, he com comes in, yes. and like you said, he does this whole Moses thing. <laughs> he he beyond the Moses, okay? He beyond the Moses, and he uh, he drives away Fury. He drives away the villains, and then he leaves like a boss. Like he literally mic drops and says, "You got this. We shall meet again, Titan." You know, whatever the case is. And he, he anyway, he 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 raises the uh, the lake. Oh, and, so cool. and, and empties the lake. He with does empties the empties lake so the we can lake. get our Zord. Our so we Titano. can see he reveals that Titano Zord. Hookbeard hangs around, and that's where Hookbeard we're... hangs around. Uh -huh. Hooks around. Oh, uh -huh. I got you. I see what you did there. Uh -huh. So Hookbeard hangs around, and they have, uh, of course, they bring back the whole victory charge and Dino Wreck charger, and they finish the monster, and of course, what happens? Maximum that over. Is it maximum victory? Ma victory maximum. Victory maximum. Brilliant. So they finish him off, but of course, what happens when you finish off a monster? You gotta make my monster grow. All right, so something else we talked about sure. uh, off screen that I'm not the biggest fan of the of the Zord fights. I'm not the biggest mech guy. Right. I'm, I've but never have been. For good reason, I think. Yeah. For but good reason. This is the, one of the first seasons where um, we've gotten mech fights or Zord fights, and I was like, okay, right. like I'm into it. Like. It, I, I don't know. And why do you think that is, though? I think it's because... I have my reasons. I have my reasons. I think it's because they're make, they made the Zords in this season characters. Sure. And I think that it makes me actually care about them yeah. rather than just them being mechs. I agree. And that's what we were talking about. They made them sentient. Yes. They made them sentient. Not only did they make them sentient, they really did make them a good plot focus. So anytime they discover a gem, they had to find the Zord attached to this, that gem. Right. You know what I mean? So they really did the whole triangle, which is Ranger, Zord, and a gem. So one without the other without the other means nothing. You need all three components for the mission. You know what I mean? Which is something we're not used to in all the other seasons. But like, Sentai does that all the time. Like, for right. instance, Goanger, RPM equivalent to, uh, to RPM. Um, Goanger was very kitty, but all of their, uh, their zords, their mechs, were sentient. Not only were they sentient, they were anime, googly-eyed, talking oh, yeah, creatures. Yeah. They were talking creatures. And that's... that's that's what makes kids really relate to them because they're acting on their own free will. They're their own, they're their own character, like you said. And for, for Dino Charge, 
these characters, like Rexy, you know who Rexy is, he's the T-Rex. They're talking about Tri Tricera and all the other, and, St and Stego. Not only do you care about these Zords, but you gotta discover them and they become the auxiliary weapons on these Zords and I didn't, no disrespect to the seasons once again. Anytime we make a comparison, it's never oh, any yeah, yeah. disrespect to any other seasons because we love them all. Yeah, every I, every season has definitely a shine. It's merits. Spot, yeah. They all have this merits and they all have a place in our heart. You know, just so I'm a little bit higher and our heart's located in other places than the other. But I didn't care about the Zords in Super Mega Force. I didn't really care about. Yeah, fact, yeah, you know what? Even in I, I can't even, even in Mega Force. I, I, oh yeah, it was the pirate ship. Well, in almost, Super Mega Force, it was. But in Mega Force, it had to do with. The, uh, the dragon, and, and, yeah, the, the, and it should have been cool. It really should have been cool. It had the, the dragon, the tiger, the snake, cool. the phoenix. You know what I mean? There those were, those were cool suits, though. I honestly think that Megaforce had some of the best uh, designs as far as the suits, as far as the mechs, as far as everything. And then all of a sudden, you know, they decide to go super mega, and they go pirates. <sighs> you know what? I have a, I have a, well, we'll talk about it on another episode. I had a great... Uh, how do we call it fan fiction? It should have been called Power Rangers Space Raiders. That would have been my thing. Anything would have been better than Super Mega because, and it's not like their powers got destroyed. We just decided to, by the way, Rangers, we have another upgrade for you. It's been here the whole time. But yeah, back yeah. to this though. They get Sorry. they they have the big Zord fight. <laughs> they do, they do. And we had the whole badass keeper moment. But we which have was a, awesome. we have a new Zord. We do, and this and this is another beast moment. Titanozord is a beast. He takes these attacks head on. He turns into its whole. He turns in himself into a Megazord, and this is the first time I think we had all nine Rangers in the cockpit. Yes. And what it was an really epic cool. moment. Yeah. Oh man, it's just seeing and all those Rangers great. together. They looked great. Like one Love shy that. of the full set, and we had all nine ma nine Rangers, all super Dino moded out. I don't like the super Dino. Mode I like it just fine. Like it. He doesn't like it. I mean, I, the only I thing like I don't it. like about the U.S. exclusive uh, suit modes is the fact that it is reserved for the cockpits. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, is that a U.S. exclusive thing? That's not a that's not a Sentai thing at all. Oh wow, I that's not a Sentai that. thing at all. Same thing with the uh, Samurai. The whole Shogun mode. And, oh, okay. And a lot of the, actually the whole cockpits in Samurai was all original footage. Oh, I didn't know that. It was all original footage. So same thing with here. But I do love the line by, uh, I think it was Shelby that says, well, look at the cockpit. It looks so awesome. It looks the same as every other cockpit. Yeah. Let's, let's be honest. But it was a cool moment to see all the, the, the team up, man. I mean, Dino Charge and Dino Supercharge is essentially a big force of Rangers. Yeah. A, uni a, a very international uh, source of rangers mm -hmm. brought together. I, I, which I love. It's, yeah. it's like you said, the diversity on this season is bar none the best. Yeah, man. The best we've had yet. Yeah, man. So they have the show, uh, showdown with the Zords and, and Hookbeard and they win. And we have a lot of resolution at the end. Uh, Keeper returns the water to the lake because we need water for our planet. Well, we're in a drought, especially well, in California. That's what I'm saying. So we are being conscious Maybe to Keeper our... can return the water back to California. Keeper. Maybe better off. If you're listening. Cali needs ya. Just saying. So Keeper returns the water. Uh, Tyler's dad goes on another mission, of course. And I think it's, but here's the thing, as much as we're talking about Rangers not being utilized and Rangers disappearing, I think the way they're written in and out makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's a great use Phillips, of a plot device. Prince Phillips needs to run a country, but he's still helping. Clearly he's helping find the, the bigger he's, picture. Yeah. He's using his resources sure. to try to find the silver energy gem and he has the resource, he's a prince. He runs a, a, a country, nation? A kingdom. A kingdom. A country. We'll say a country. We'll, we'll go with that. And, you know, like Tyler's dad, he is still the adventurer. And Tyler, not too, not too far off. You know, the apple doesn't far too, fall too far from the tree. So he goes, and his new mission is to help with the uh, Silver Energem and that whole, that whole mission. And with Riley and Matt, they actually come to terms as far as no one was really right or wrong. Sure. There are many ways to have fun. Uh, being competitive is a way to have fun. But having fun is also is also a way to have fun. But it is worth noting that when Matt was having fun and not taking things serious, he was a little bit more successful. You know what I mean? So they did show him it's win carefree spirit a little bit more, yeah. more just relaxed. Sure, sure. So they did show him winning the the fishing competition or the, the the casting competition. They did show him successful with fish as well compared to Chase and his <laughs> uh, his, and his collection. Working. And at the end of that episode, Chase accepts his power that he discovered with fishing and loves the fact that he catches boots. I thought that was nice, a uh, nice nod. Oh, there was another part that we forgot to mention, which is uh, the warm jokes. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah, warm, the warm jokes. jokes. So uh, I like, the, so you, we see, in the beginning of the episode, we see- uh, Halfway through. Halfway through, we see Shelby and Chase eating 
what looked noodles. like noodles. Yeah. And then uh, and enjoying them by the Matt's way. Matt's like, oh, where's my worms? And Coda's like, oh, they're here. And they're like, oh, Coda. Like, you, I mean, you know what I love about that joke though? They went all the way. It wasn't like they were kind of eating it. By when they mentioned worms, they had full mouthful <laughs> of worms in their mouth. Like, where's the worms? Oh, I gave them. The they, 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 it, it was real. The hunger was real, and they spit it out talking about worms. We thought there were noodles, so it was a cool little moment. And then Coda's just chowing down on him at the end. At of the, the end of the episode, they were talking about like, "Oh, Coda, I didn't know you were using worms when you were catching the fish." Keep in mind, he was catching them with his bare hands. He was like, "Oh no, no bait, food." Coda going at it because Coda's lovable, and we we love we, we need a Coda moment to end, to end it. So overall thoughts, man. We've gone fishing. Um, what did you think about the episode? It was the best episode this season. Yes. I would I would say best episode. Well, there's only been two so far for this half. Well, I mean, it's been the best episode, I would say, throughout the whole run, oh. I feel like. You know what? I, I, I wouldn't disagree. Um, I like the... Now, the big... the big. Well, what did you think? I love this. I mean, once again, this should have been the episode that Dino Supercharged returned on, because the last episode was definitely a filler episode. Okay. Nothing nothing really happened, per se. It didn't, it didn't move the story along. Not at all. Well, well very it, moved, it, moved, it moved Shelby's character along. Yeah, I, should, I shouldn't say not at all. I shouldn't it say didn't move. It didn't move the plot, the whole plot, overall plot along. Correct. Let me, one thing you did mention, which I want to touch on a little bit, mm. is that you said that there's a lot of big moments in this episode. There was a lot of beast moments. Beast in this moments. Episode. So let's talk about our favorite beast moments throughout Power Rangers history. Let's do quick. it. Because in this episode, let's we give... had Keeper being a beast. We had Titanosaur being a beast. Oh, and before I forget, we had a beast um, uh, heckle and snide moment where Hinge. Sn Singe, I'm sorry, Singe, Singe. Oh, that was, great. was getting that was interrogated awesome by, uh, by uh, Heckle, asking him, how did you know where the Titanosaur was? And he's like, oh, you know, I have my ways. <laughs> he's like, I'll ask you again. And dude, that's, that's a villain right there. I he mean, was, yeah. He that's was, the villain right there. But dude. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, Heckle. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, I think that, let, let's talk about this. So sure. let's run down our top five beast moments in Power Ranger histories. Let's do it. Uh, I'll let you give the honors of number five. Number five, beast moments in Power Ranger history. I would say the appearance of Titanium and Lightspeed. Okay. Because he came in beast. He had this whole entrance from like the, the not the heavens, but he like floated down and just wrecked shop. Very, very reminiscent to, to Tommy a little bit, but the way he was just backing him into a corner and marching him into a corner. Tit Titanium had like a really cool ranger entrance, I think. So, so should, I do, should I do my five or should I go with number four, like piggyback on? Um, I would say... I'll do my number five. Do your number five. Do my number, number five. five is uh, in space, Which where one? it's the season finale and you see... Countdown. Countdown, but you see the four rangers standing up tall. When yeah. they just kind of just are like, you know, we're the Power Rangers. We're the Power much. Rangers. And then that's when Bulk and Skull were like, it's them. Like yeah, this yeah. whole, for about four or five years, they didn't I, know who the Rangers I think, were. I think that. Shane was with them too. I think I think it was five of them, but Andros was. Oh yeah, Zane. Zane, so, Zane was with dude, them. Dude, I love that. I'm out, of, I'm out of put that higher on my list, to be honest with you. Oh, I got some good ones coming. That's that's okay. So let's but, go to your four. Okay, number four, beast, 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 beast moments. Oh man, on the spot, on the spot, on the spot. It's tough, yeah? Well, with, like on the spot. On the spot, of course. You know what, why not? Let's go with uh, Once a Ranger. Once okay. a Ranger from Operation Overdrive because at this point to me, Ad, um, Johnny Young Bosch slash Adam can do no wrong. Adam at this point is a veteran ranger. We establish it and acknowledge the fact that he's running dojos and he's the leader of the substitute ranger team after the core Operation Overdrive members pretty much retire or quit. So you got Adam back, you got uh, Tori, you got Emma, you got, you got Zonda, your favorite guy, Zonda. Zonda. <laughs> Actually, I would agree with you. That and is also bridge. my number four. And bridge. You That's my that? number four. Okay. I would agree with so you. So you had these, or we're going we're gonna to toss this back to you and say, what's your number three? My number three is the intro of the Gold Ranger in Zeo. So good. Um, that was so the first time... Good. Like the power, that's the first time we see this guy that's completely badass, sure. hear this new voice, don't know who he is, and I love the buildup that Zio did with not knowing who, like in every episode it was like, this could be the Gold Ranger, well that could be the Gold Ranger, right, this right, nerdy guy right. Raymond could be the Gold Ranger, Billy could be the Gold Ranger, it was alluded to anybody could be the Gold Ranger. They did have a couple of misleads. And, Which uh, I thought was great though. Yeah. Because yeah. it could have been Sean, Tanya's boyfriend, that played baseball That's at a time. That's right. Uh, there was rumors that it was Ryan Steele from VR Troopers, which... Which could, is kind of... Kind of true. Almost completely um, true. 
And then there were rumors that obviously Billy was like the 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 number one. Billy choice. was the MacGuffin. Like Billy was like the, the straight. That's who it is. That's without question who it is. Then there was Raymond, the guy that was there. I'm so him. impressed that you even remember all these. Zeal's one of my favorite seasons. I, so. It's showing. It's showing. So yeah. that that Gold Ranger, like I'm a Gold Ranger fan. So, so am I. I love the best and believe Gold Ranger is. So that's my awesome. three. Okay. So. Oh man, that's somewhere on my list, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna copy it. I'm not gonna copy it because I think number three for me was, man, just uh, <laughs> I want to say, return of a friend um, when oh, Tommy okay. came back. When Tommy came back, because when he came back, all you saw was boots walking towards uh, the com- uh, I remember that the, the, the youth center, and you did, you know he was like, what? what what's going on? All you see is boots, 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 and then. He stops, he looks around, the camera pans up, and then you see Tommy finally sporting the, the hair tie the with, with the ponytail, the, the mullet was gone, and all you hear was, go, green, ranger, go, go, you know what I mean, and the trail off, and then the very next episode, he had to fight to, to, to get the, uh, the, the ranger coins back from, from Goldar by himself, half-powered, losing his power during the fight, and to me, that was just a beast moment, and I, th- I thought that was a great moment for the, for the for the Tommy character to come back and just re-solidify himself in the team, especially since Green Ranger footage in Japan was gone at this point. You yeah. want to go with your number two? I'll go with my number two. I'm like, two. come on, man, I just got uh, done. <laughs> my, my number two is the first team-up we've ever had of Power Rangers, which was Space and Lost Galaxy. That was pretty dope. Um, mainly that because was that was the first time we've actually seen two complete teams. Actually, that's not true. Let me take that back. Oh. That's not the first time we saw well, two complete teams. Because it was Zeo, <laughs> Zeo and Alien Rangers that did the, yeah. the, the first team up officially. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to take that back. And I'm going to say my number two moment is when the Space Rangers fought the Psycho Rangers. Oh, I'm a huge a fan of the Psycho call. Rangers that's, and I'm a huge fan of Power Rangers in really Space. Good call. Um, to me, Power Rangers in Space is one, I, I'm sure you guys would agree with me, one of the best seasons that Power Rangers has ever done. Sure. Um, and I love the Psycho Rangers because that was that was the first time that I really got to see the Power Rangers really tested like that. Yeah, man. So that would be my number two. Okay. My number two would be Time Force where Wes pretty much self-sacrifices himself to let the other Rangers go back to their time. And then you find out that just through his, uh, through you know, just through story that he did stay behind and he fought the entire army by himself. Well, with... With, uh, with the quantum. Rangers. With quantum, right? Correct. With quantum, and um, and basically, dude, it just pretty much shows you that uh, it, it really, to me, that was like the epitome. We had of this a talk a while ago, and you said that you think that Wes is the best Power Ranger ever. He saved. He basically saved two futures. You know what I'm saying? In one end, he could have still sacrificed. But himself. Leo saved two galaxies. That's How about that. But guess what? I was with you when you said no, Leo, and I was just no, don't don't be kidding because Leo's a boss. I do. I do. I like Leo. That, I mean, Leo's a boss. And I wouldn't say he was the best ever, but I, I think Leo's in the talk for it. But Leo was pretty Goku-like. Like, he did have, like, the, the battle on, like, the vanishing planet type sure. of thing. You know what I mean? Against Trakina? Yeah, Trakina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was pretty boss. But no, so Wes self-sacrifices, and you hear that he didn't... He basically died in battle, him and him and Eric, and that, you know, their, their future was secure because he made that sacrifice. But obviously, the Time Rangers went back. They're just like, no... It's, it's, we can't let this happen, you know, even though it's essentially done. Like, it's done it's in their moment. time. They go back, changed history. You actually maybe want to go watch, rewatch that season. It's, it's honestly a great season. I mean, as much as we use it as a, as a, as a punchline at this point. Like, oh, I, think, I don't think so. I think a lot of people... No, I in mean, a good way, because people say, like, oh, you want a good season? Watch Time Force. It's like the go-to oh, at this point. I, that, I think, that's, that's oh, for I me, think. it's RPM. Like, that's the thing. But I'm going to give you... I love RPM. RPM is up there, but Time Force is like... I, I agree. It's one of the best. Yeah, yeah. My number one moment, this is, should come as no surprise, Forever Red. Damn you! Oh, that's my number that was, one moment. Of course, it's Forever Red. How many, uh, you get to see ten Red Rangers in one, ep- that's the most epic episode in pa- The only bad thing about that episode, well, there's a couple, the, only, the main bad thing is it's only half an hour long. That was like, that should have been like crazy? a five parter. Are you crazy for only making that one episode? Even like a even like a second episode would have helped. You know what's funny about that is I was out of Power Rangers when I when I even heard about that episode. So was I actually. And I Googled it because somebody told me to, and I was like, holy shit, it's I don't even know how I can say that. Holy crap, it's every <laughs> single ranger, like every single red ranger up to that point that's ever been in existence, with the exception of Steve Cardenas, because he wasn't. There. How would that work though? I mean, if they brought back Steve. He could have been in his little ninja outfit. The red ninja outfit? You know what I thought they should have done? 
I mean, everyone always talks about, yeah, they could use the the, uh, the movie Armored Rangers, you know what I mean, or use the one from the movie. The Ninjutsu like, suit. The problem with that is they were in space. Well, no, I guess the space thing didn't matter because they morphed. Yeah. Yeah, they were unmorphed. You know what I would have done? I would have had him as MMPR Red, but had Jason as MMPR Red with the dragon shield. Oh, that would have been good. With the dragon shield. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, that's like, that's the difference between you two. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, that story arc and that, just that clout was there. You know what I'm saying? I love Forever Red, mainly for the epicness that was seeing all of them together. Sure. Um, sure. And... But that, that begs to differ the question, too, because they all consider Tommy the greatest ranger of all time. They did have that line. But then they all have, a, have like great lines about how they, because Jason has a fair claim to say that he was the greatest of all time. But, I mean, at the end of the day, regardless of my personal opinion, because I, I'm a Jason fan, I'm a Carter fan. I love Tommy the character. I love Tommy the character. I think he was kind of... You're not a JDF fan of her. Is that something we don't really say that publicly, right? I don't, I don't know. What are you talking about? So... <laughs> Uh, so, but with that said, Tommy, Jason David Frank, man, he was dedicated to the show. He was. He was dedicated to the show. They, they, and he still is. And he still is. And he carried the franchise on his back. I'm not going to say by himself, but he did have a big part as far as why Power Rangers is successful. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Regardless, he came in as a Green Ranger, White Ranger. White Ranger's my favorite. Zio. Oh, Zero, Zero Red, red cool Turbo Red, Dino Thunder Black. Um, there was a cool episode where, you know, um, Fighting Spirit and Dino Thunder. That was a great see, episode. And I love that they did that, you know what I'm saying? And, and again, shout, shout out to the Disney season because guess what? That happened during the Disney season. Disney is super underrated. D Disney is super criticized for, again, people don't like Disney because they thought like, oh, why do they keep having these different themes? And why do they, have, like, keep, they keep changing it? They keep changing it. But come to find out, like, yeah, guess what? In Japan, they changed the seasons. That's what happened. It's not like the old MMPR days where you're able to find another reason for a new suit upgrade and a new suit upgrade and have yeah. Tommy be a race car driver all of a sudden because of Turbo. But now, hey, now he's, a sci he's a scientist. Well, now he's a doctor, Dr. O, because of reasons. And all the characters. Do. Uh, anyway, those uh, are our top five most epic my, beast moments. My, uh, my uh, um, what's it called? My, uh, my, my, my second round of rub. What, what am I trying to say? I have no idea what you're trying to Damn say. Damn you! Like, um, like, not part of the list, but... Oh, your runner, your, your, like, your, yeah, your, uh, your special mention or whatever is the... Josh! Honorable your honorable mention. mention. Honorable mention, thank you! I'm like, I know somebody here can talk for me. My honorable mention was the table with the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> okay. I hated that. I hated it. Because they even had the female, what's her name? Milo DeMilo? Venus, Venus DeMilo? De Milo. <laughs> I was not a fan of it. That wasn't your beast moment? Okay, that was not a beast moment. Okay, we're not. We're um, but here's moment. what we do want to do right now. Uh, last week, we had a few comments, and we wanted to... Uh, Nature Turtles, man. We wanted to address them a little bit. So, uh, Blackwing2040 Black says, Wing. he likes the discussion. I love how you guys d uh, dive deep into the Ranger history and how the franchise has changed over the years. Oh, thanks, man. He said he'll subscribe, and he loves what we do. We want to say thank you to you. Um, we also had... How do you say this dude's name? This dude's name is Amenzi Amaruyi. Hashtag show. He subscribed to our channel, so that's great. Uh, Andrew Suarez, I wanted to say thank you. Uh, he likes how we go off topic, but he enjoyed, <laughs> he, he, he enjoyed the episode and he can't wait for more. Thank you. Lance Mueller, my good buddy Lance, this was awesome. This is something I'd love to do sometime. Uh, I love having deep conversations about geeky stuff. Uh, David Hughes was not a fan of last week's episode. He said this was one of the worst. I can see why he says that. I can. I too. can see why he says that. Uh, yeah. Jamal Pickett, any any redeeming qualities for Jungle Fury or Mega Force? You actually responded to this on YouTube, but you want to respond here? I did. And to me, Jungle Fury, I like Casey. I mean, I feel like Casey's one of those characters where at first, I feel like Jungle Fury is for a For me, very... I, for Jungle Fury, I love Jared, dude. He Jared, had... He was beast. Oh, there's a beast. And he had there's a, a beast moment. A beast moment. A beast he had moment. a great character story arc and sure. a redeeming quality at the end. Yeah. Him and Camille, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, were, no, both they were both really They were both great. awesome. I think if you actually go back and watch that season and just focus on those two, you'll be satisfied. Come to Megaforce. Um, I think that Megaforce is... It's, it's unfortunate because it, it is underrated to an extent. But what they were trying to set up in the grander scheme of things... MMPR reboot. ...was MMPR reboot. Um, but if you take the... Some, certain characters shine, like Jake, Noah... I would say Jake, Noah, and Gia in particular. Well, Noah, to me, probably had the best progression. Uh, Jake... 
probably had the biggest change. <laughs> yeah. Well, with Noah, he went from book smarts and only book smarts to, you know, very technical savvy, the Billy of the team, to a, a master swordsman. Which I, I love that episode. It's my, one of my favorites. The reason why he became a master swordsman is because of his ethics, because of his, uh, his temperament as a, as a student and his, and his work ethics. Right. So he self-trained and became the best he could be that no one ever was, Pokemon style, and became like a quadruple sword wielder. I wanna be the very best that no one. My Filipino ness came out. And I said very best as opposed yeah, to yeah, you did very best. Uh, we're gonna move on. Kent Brown, he says, okay, Dino, uh, su Dino Supercharge. I say it's good, but I know some things could have been handled better. <laughs> it kind of had similar problems as Mega Force yeah. had uh, when they would set something up and get resolved and fixed later on in the episode or two. Uh, it doesn't feel like anything big happened. You're right, because nothing big did happen in the last episode. We do agree, but... It was a filler episode. It was a filler episode. This episode was the one that you wanted to hang on for. Edward Sanchez, our good buddy, Edward Sanchez. We got the Edward Sanchez approval, by the way. Yeah, uh, man. I really enjoyed watching and listening to you guys. Um, had to say about the episode and other Power Ranger seasons. And uh, 10 Denali, you. Oh my God, please do RPM. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much. That's going to happen whether you like it or not. Yeah, we're, we're debating. <laughs> we're going to let you guys decide which one we do. Um, if you want to reach out to us, well, first of all, if you want to reach out to us, you can hit us up right here in the comments below. We'll read them next week. Yep. Or you can email us if you're listening at home or in your car. You can email us at fanquestions at thathashtagshow.com, yep. and we will read those as well. If you want to send us a video and be on our show, send us a video fan question. We will put it on the show, and that's pretty much it. Before we go, I do want to show you a preview of this week's Morphin Monday. It is with Davi Santos, who plays Ivan the Gold Ranger, and here you go. Um, quick question. So if I can get a hashtag for what's going to be a spoiler, maybe not a spoiler, but something that could be coming up in your season, what would it be? Hashtag for your characters, respectively. Ooh. Hashtag friends forever. Like Forever-ish? Forever-ish. Friends slash friend of me. Forever. Hash, hashtag relative. Oh, all right. And all right, guys, what'd you think about today's episode, Gone Fishing? And tell us some of your favorite Ranger Beast moments in Ranger history. Leave a message in the comments below. We will be back next week with Love at First Fight, the 11th episode of Power Rangers Dino Supercharge. Uh, I'm Joe. This is DJ. Thanks for watching. And hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with everything trending in, in geek, geek pop, pop culture. culture.